<laughs> so are we going to talk about it? How are we going to talk? How are we going to start it? So we're going to ask to see who are you first. <laughs> and what are you doing in Vancouver? How did you end up here? Well, we actually took the plane up. Um, okay. I don't know how you got here. That sounded a little I more ride, adventurous. I ride my bicycle to work. Sometimes I walk, but yeah. yeah. So you live in... You know what I said, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, and don't ask those well. te technical questions <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you, I'm not supposed to ask those? <laughs> but, well, you know, I, I kind of avoid them, don't I? No, so, well, well <laughs> it's, it's, but maybe I want to get to know you. I know. Right? Maybe but I feel like I know, our I know microphones you're... off and talk uh, off the camera. Yeah. Is that, <laughs> yeah, is that right? where you like? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, I, don't, I don't punch it, but I cut people usually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I, I use a dull razor when, when something, ah. you know, I use the sharp one on you today. But Yeah, so. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, um, we, I'm very personal and stuff. I mean, I like to keep my personal life personal. Yeah. And, <laughs> and expose all of us. And expose everybody <laughs> else. That's my, yeah, yeah. That's my MO. Um, it's so up until right now, until we spoke on the phone the other day, that worked pretty well. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was very impressed with your interrogation skills. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, I, uh, I, uh, I was interested because, you know, you got a guy calling you first thing I ask if you like football, if you remember that. Yeah, yeah I did. And then what did I say? You said you're not into football much. I, you, yeah, I you said no. You might enjoy it I mean, much. But I think I have, I have horrible flashbacks to school, you know, mm. where, where you had to play, play the soccer and, 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 and things like the rugby. Why are you calling it soccer then? I'm you're one. too Americanized now? Because, because otherwise people don't understand what I'm saying. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I guess your audience is more, yeah. Yeah, I, I would say the most of the audience are probably about 70 to 80% uh, from the US. Uh, the rest of the YouTube followers are UK. I think Germany and Brazil are in their third and fourth. So and now hopefully we get some Vancouverites watching I'm this. Still, yeah. Occasionally there's uh, somebody from Iran watches. I'm oh not, yeah. I'm not sure how they get on the internet, but they oh, do they, watch. Their internet is pretty good. It is pretty good. Yeah, they, uh, they're not supposed to go on certain websites. Okay, YouTube's uh, okay then. YouTube, no, they're not, but they, they have this thing called proxy. Yeah, Apparently yeah. your computer thinks is in Holland or yep. thinks so yep. you could hook up there and yep. then they could watch anything they want. Yeah. That, like that. they're not supposed to be on Facebook, they're all on Facebook. Okay. They're all on it. So yeah, so they find a way to Technology is an amazing yeah. thing, yeah. isn't it? They do. Yeah. yeah. So. And that's how you are here for. <laughs> 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 that's how we go back to you again. <laughs> so yeah, that's how I, can you can you can you get that one back to me? Well, I was you trying know, to uh, I was trying to like Yeah, so the question. you do have your audience in North America and yep. and you travel around the world. Yep. And you do get a haircut or shave and the reason is it is okay. The main reason for doing it is what we're, lo we're looking for are um, unique, interesting barbershops and barbers. And we try to share that experience using film as a medium. So we take more of a documentary approach to filming. And the idea is that um, it originated from when I was traveling in, um, in the past, before YouTube, before digital cameras. And I would be traveling for an extended period of time, and your hair grows, so you have to go to a barber shop. Your hair cut. Yeah. yeah. And so what I found was that inside the barber shops, you had a more genuine, unique um, interaction with the local community. Sense of community. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it was one of the few places, or actually, it was the only place I think that I would go to, and you would form some kind of genuine uh, bond or interaction the neighborhood with, with people are yeah. there and yeah. yeah yeah and and it wasn't it was nothing to do with tourism you know you weren't being harassed you're one of them for a yeah, little bit yeah, yeah. You, you you you're going you know going for example in turkey or, or sorry or tunisia i think was one of the first places and you're being harassed for you know buying things doing this you know and you as a foreigner you're seen as a, a checkbook sure or, yeah yeah so, but it was actually the experience in a Tunisian barber shop where they want to offer you a service. They, they, yeah, they're offering me a service, and I got treated exactly the same as anybody else coming into that place. And that's a and, special. And that was what I was looking sure. for. That was whenever I was going traveling. That was what I was a looking local for. experience. A local to experience. I, I, you know, so. I do the same thing, even though I'm a barber. But when I go to cities, different cities, I try to get a shape. You, you yeah. got like customers. Yeah, it's late. They, they should know I'm close. So. 
That's a, that's, so, an, that's an old phone as well, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's good. I uh, I tease people sometimes when they say, "What's that red phone?" I guess it's a direct line to the White House. So it, it's it a is. Red line. Is it is it, so you're, you're you're the culprit responsible for Trump's uh, for things? Trump. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not let's not go there. Let's go back to Tunisia. Okay. <laughs> I um, I remember. In do, this, have, uh, do do you have one of those uh, antique answer machines as well? Uh, no, I don't actually. I don't let them leave a message because when when we when if they leave a message, I have to respond lots of messages in the morning. So they want a book. I I don't need that. So <laughs> I I the, the way it works in our shop is when we answer the phone, we recognize their voices. People ask me why don't you book online, and so I I recognize my client's voice on the phone. So you can't recognize their typeface no, on the computer. No, you know, and it's and it is the sense of neighborhood thing. Mm -hmm. I there there was a there was a recent question uh, from one of our colleagues in UK from me. Uh, a book was written, uh, and they asked me what titles I'm holding, and what uh, awards I ever won, because these days uh, it's important to win awards apparently. So I said uh, the title I would love in any given day is the neighborhood barber and the award I always win is when my clients come back sit on my chair so back to our conversation now that experience could be the same in Tunisia or Istanbul or Vancouver when it is a sense of neighborhood but if you create the atmosphere that you trying to target certain type of people in your shop no matter what type, the cool guys, the good guys, the bad, but you're targeting certain type of people. You're not part of the neighborhood anymore. Not everybody feels comfortable there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you, when you walk into a barber shop in Istanbul, you sit there, you don't speak their language, they don't even care. You sit there, I was in Istanbul, I went in there and I got a shave. The guy actually cut my back pretty badly. Uh, I have a mole here. He. Um, he soaked it. My poor guy, first time shaving me, he missed a mole and cut it, and he grabbed a piece of newspaper, put it on, and I got a great shave, and I walked out. When I walked by the next day, we waved at each other. Uh -huh. Even though you don't speak language, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and you've seen more than I've seen, I, I guess, in your experiences. When, when we're traveling, we don't always, I mean, you, 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 I, mean I, th I think we've tra I've traveled enough to pick up on sign languages and, and stuff, so um, it's impossible to speak even the basic language in a lot of places, but mm. you're using, you know, you're the using sign your hands and, 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 and they God understand. forbid if I go into yeah. a barber shop and, you know, I'm trying to buy a baguette, then some, something's gone wrong. Yeah. You know, you, no, you, know, you, it's, there, you, you know, know what like they want. Yeah. I tell you a funny story. I was in uh, Mexico City in December. Uh, because of street talk barber they knew us and they wanted us to do the same thing in Mexico so they took us to this senior housing and one of the guys sat on the chair I was there don't speak Spanish so I would take my own hat off I was wearing a hat and ask them if they want this with sign language and mm -hmm. they would say maybe a little longer yeah, yeah, or they yeah. would give me a thumbs up so this guy sits on the chair uh, and I asked him, oh, he was in his wheelchair, I think. He was in his own wheelchair. So he came over, and I put the cape around his neck, and I took my hat off, and I started asking like an idiot, you know, like asking pretty weird. <laughs> you want short like this, or you want me to go shorter? And time, he said, not that short. I'm Frederico. What's your name? <laughs> so he spoke to me in the English, <laughs> you know. You feel, okay, this one. <laughs> So yeah, that's that's a language. Yeah, I think you language. know. I think uh, you know when when I was in Tunisia, then uh, I was getting my hair cut, and uh, it was in the nineties, and it was a long grunge, you know. So I had long hair. Yeah. And somebody told me, have you have you, ha have you ever seen this? Have you, like you? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. Middle Easter. It's yeah. very Middle Easter. Yeah. What's yeah. it called? Well, they ask you if you're interested. Yeah, I know, <laughs> exactly. Is so I, I know had, what is it called. So I had long hair, and, yeah. and some some tourist there, he's like, you know, he's, he he heard I was going to go into Algeria and and, yeah. and, and stuff, and uh, and he says, you know what, blue eyes, long hair, you might want to cut your hair off a bit, yeah. you know. They and so I'm, I'm in the barber shop in Tunisia getting my hair cut, and this, the, you know, they they were kind of like in, surprised or enthralled and and stuff, and they were getting kind of giggly about mm. me being in there and, and stuff. There was a, a French guy that was had come down to the barbershop with me and he was laughing. I'm like, what are they saying? And he's like, 
well, the young guy here, he, he's a little confused. And I'm like, well, what? He's like, he's like well, he's like, you, you got long hair. He's, he, he was wondering if you wanted to be a woman. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, a cultural thing. Uh, like, okay, yeah, we'll take it off. Take it's, it off. it's a cultural it thing. Is, yeah. Yeah, a lot of places. Now, where did you have the best shape? Besides here, today? Well, I don't have a razor in my hand anymore. You could be honest. Oh, I can be honest. Can be honest. Um, <laughs> I, you know what? Out of all the videos we've done, I don't say I, d I don't. Pick, no, I know, I, I but don't. you don't have to mention places, countries. You could say, or you know, I, there are places like sometimes we have a bad day, sometimes we have. A good I, day. I, I mean, I, th I think the street barber in in India, India was good. There was I, th there's a British company that they've tried started franchising in India as well, um, and um, that was like a 45 minute experience, and and I'm with. I mean, I said that I get a little nervous when we're filming and stuff, but I was actually very relaxed. In that. You got into it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah in I, the think the clock, I think the clock ticking mm. in the background yeah. clocked and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, um, what's in it for you? What's in it for me? Yeah. How do you make a living? How do I make a living? Because that was one of your favorite questions. Yeah, on the that's phone, what wasn't I did. On yeah, the phone. I usually, when I get people, yeah. when people <laughs> call me here, I ask them, "What's in it for me? What's in it for you?" Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I thought you were trying to think of a career no, change and, and no actually <laughs> no and you are the only and maybe the only person I ever shaved doing an interview or doing an article about me and I'm not charging you because <laughs> but I have done a very very known journalist in this shop and and they did an article about me and I charged them because that makes it more real that they didn't come here to get a free shave to write the article about me yeah 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 right yeah, so yeah. how do you make a living how do I make a I living? don't say how much you make, though. Yeah. I say how do you make Yeah, you, you'd be... Um, okay, so a lot of people ask me, how do I fund the travel with, and, and stuff? Um, and all I can say is that I'm a cheap bastard. But <laughs> there has to... Something comes in to hold it. I'm you lucky. can't have water coming in a glass and just... But you need I, the water okay. to come in a glass. I right? think the problem is lots of people think there's a magic magical solution to doing what I'm doing. No, there isn't magical. The, but there must well, be I mean, a source that money comes in. Okay. Right? So the YouTube channel with the I get the some of the ads revenue. Good. And so now that's how I'm able to do it. Do it's, it. it's not a hundred percent enough to um, do that. To do it. So um we it's subsidized a little bit um from some other work that I have done on and off. Um so um, I won't say what that is. Well, actually, maybe I should because what's people your might background? think it's yeah, a that was my next question. <laughs> that was my next question. What's your background? What did you do before you did this? So my educational background, I have a, um, a uh, and, and before actually going back to the funding thing, before we go, I should say um, this is going to be my plug. So I'm glad you asked that mm -hmm. question. <laughs> um, I will add a link below to my Patreon channel, <laughs> oh, my Patreon link where you can help me do this. Do this. <laughs> <laughs> Fundraising. So, so part of it is there are some people that are willing to donate. So that, that's part of it. It's a very, very small. It about covers the cost of the video editing subscription a month. That's it. Uh, the bulk of the money comes from um, YouTube AdSense, from, from the sh ad revenue share. Um, that is, mm, again, it's not enough to cover everything. Um, um, hopefully it will get to it a will point where we will get there, yeah. Um, t personally, I've decided not to um, encourage people coming to me to for sponsorship because my experience has been that they want something for free. And so it's, it's kind of, to me, it's a little disheartening. <laughs> to, you know, to, to sell to, your experience. To, 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 yeah, to do that and, yeah. to, you know. It's the same um, like me when I charge people. Yeah. So I might have to charge you tonight. Okay, that's, that's no, no big deal. We, 